Evie just got a whole lot more realistic with this new feature, so let's dive into it. A new depth of field update has Eevee producing better renders than ever. Personally, I've always avoided using Eevee for my final renders because I use a lot of shallow depth of field in my work, so I think this new feature is amazing. I still don't think this will be replacing cycles anytime soon because ray tracing still offers too many advantages. But I do believe this means if you're running on a lower spec computer and use Eevee to render, you can produce higher quality images. If you're familiar with my channel, I am doing more of my traditional tutorials soon. I'm working on a few. It's been a bit slow because I'm actually working on a new product that'll help you create scenes like the ones I've created here, but I'll save that for a later announcement. For now, let's dive into the video. This is from the upcoming update of Blender 2.93 and I reached out to the developer who was nice enough to kind of share me some of the notes and help me along with some of the features so that I could better explain this new feature to you. I asked him the best way to support him and he linked me to the Blender Dev Fund. So if you'd like to support features like this, check out the Blender Development Fund. First up, you don't need to enable anything new. Rather, we just need to learn the new settings. And I'll be giving away this blend file that I'll be using in the video for free. So check it out at the end of the video if you're interested. So first things first, we need to make sure depth of field is enabled in Eevee and that's not not actually under the render tab. That's under the camera tab under the camera settings. We can turn on depth of field here and adjust other aspects of our camera here. But to adjust how the bokeh looks and how the depth of field looks, we're gonna need to head back over to the render tab in Eevee and we can play with the settings there. Now, first I wanna say, if you don't know what bokeh is, it's when those lights and objects in your background kind of blur out so far that they turn into like either a spherical shape or a hexagonal shape, depending on how many blades your camera lens has. So let's look at the settings of how we can adjust the way this blur looks and make it look more realistic. First up, we have max size. This has been around for a while, but this determines the maximum size of bokeh shape. And this has already been implemented in previous features. Looking at the new features, let's look at sprite threshold and neighbor rejection nest. To understand the sprite threshold, we need to first understand how Eevee is processing the depth of field. It's a post-process method using two passes. The first pass produces the bokeh for the image, but it kind of fails out on highlights. The second pass is sprite-based, which is a different type, and it will use that reserved to improve the quality of those highlighted bokehs. So when we look at the sprite threshold here, this is actually setting the minimum value a pixel needs to be rendered using the sprite method. So you're kind of adjusting the brightness level at which this portion will kick in. The higher this number, the better your render will be, but of course it'll take longer to render. Next up, neighbor rejection. This is the max intensity for the kind of sprite neighborhood rejection. The lower the value here, the better the render is going to be. Next up, we have the denoise amount. So this helps reduce the flickering by clamping the color. Higher values are more consistent, however, it may lead to a darkening of your scene. If you've ever used clamping in your cycle settings to remove indirect light fireflies, you should be familiar with the downsides because it's clamping some of those extra lights and kind of bringing down the whole scene. Next up, we have the high quality slight defocus. This improves the quality of regions slightly out of focus. And this to me is a huge improvement for close up renders and getting that natural fall off, which is something I found difficult with previous EV renders and why I couldn't use it in animations because things up close would move and you would kind of see the edges on like that slight defocus flickering back and forth. And this helps solve that. Next up is Jitter Camera, which does exactly what it says, and it's an interesting setting. It randomizes the position of every scene render simple, and this may actually kind of alter the sample count you're rendering at. So this can help increase the accuracy of your depth of field, but it may need to be adjusted based on your scene and kind of your sample count. So this might be one you have to play with at times. Lastly, out of these settings, we have the overblur, and the overblur adds a blur at the end of the process to reduce noise, but it'll also reduce the crispness of your bokeh. And what it's doing is it's taking kind of all that depth of field that it's calculated, and then it's just kind of blurring over the top of all of that. So if you're not kind of happy with the way it looks and you want it to be a little bit more out of focus or you don't feel like it looks great, you can add a little bit of overblur, but it's gonna get away some of that crispness, which can actually kind of contribute to your realism. So be careful when playing with this one and only use it kind of in minimal amounts, unless if you're going for a highly stylized effect. Lastly, and this isn't the depth of field specifically, but it now also supports alpha in the viewport, which is fantastic for compositors and other people kind of being able to see everything that they're doing in alpha. If you're here, you love Blender, so why don't you check out the dev fund and help support more features like this. 
Full notes in the description below to this feature if you'd like to dive into more of the technicalities. And thank you for watching. As usual, if you create anything, tag me on Instagram, follow me at Southern Shoddy, and thank you for watching. Thank you.